I would think most people would think of a mud flow as something that's moving fairly slowly. Is that how you see it? Um, yeah, a lot of people talk about debris flows and mud flows as being rather slow things. Mm -hmm. The ones I have had experience with in the field, uh, I would not be of that character. Is you that, want to watch out for them. Is that okay. Mount St. Helens, yeah, for example? Mount St. Helens, for example. I do field work out there and I have to watch out for mud flows because uh, they're, they're rather severe and just one or two feet of mud uh, can uh, ruin your whole day. You avoid those kind of things. But so mud how, flows are very fast moving when we see them in uh, their, their general character. So how fast do you think a mud flow uh, would be flowing on, on the bottom of the ocean? Uh, we can actually calculate it. Uh, we can calculate what the what the the velocity would be to make a mud flow mo move suspended in water. An underwater mud flow generates a dynamic pressure at its head, and that dynamic pressure, the pr you know, like putting your hand out of the window when you're in the car, that pressure has to be equal to the submerged weight of the mud. And when that forward moving pressure is equal to the weight of the submerged mud that creates uh, a, an effect called a hydroplane. And once you get a hydroplane, the, the, it becomes frictionless, essentially, and it can move great distance. That's like we worry about on a highway. Yes. Uh, about a water, car or water. water getting under a tire can create a hydroplane. Water getting under a mud flow creates a, a non-stick, uh, frictionless surface. So that, that means it can really, it can scoot along. Yes.